I commend it to the House. Dr Megan Woods. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to take a call on this and, and talk about how it, uh, the, 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 what Labor thinks about this bill and where this fits in for the vision of how we see New Zealand going. Because it is disappointing to see members opposite take such short calls on something that is actually so fundamental for how we will progress as a country. And unless we understand how tertiary education and its provision it, it interlaces with our economic future, we stand no chance. So Labor is supporting these changes to Select Committee, as these changes should make the repayment of student loans fairer. While, we su we're, while we're supportive in principle of these changes, we want to have the opportunity at Select Committee to hear the advice of officials, and in particular the Privacy Commissioner, as to the impact of customs sharing contact details and personal information on loan borrowers with IRD. Well, while it is useful for us to be able to think about how we link all these things together, there's real concerns that Labor members do want to hear advice from the experts on at this committee stage. Student loan repayments are a huge burden on hundreds of thousands of Kiwis, myself included. I have a very large student loan, having 10 years at the University of Canterbury. And during, this time, during this time, interest accruing on my loan. And for those struggling to pay off student debt while also paying their bills and saving for a house, it is very, very difficult. It's very difficult to hear of, of overseas borrowers who are making huge amounts of money and making no attempt to pay these loans back. And that's why we do support some of the equity issues that are raised in these proposals, because there are many people who are struggling to buy a house and to pay their bills while also paying down their debt. We do expect every borrower to make an equal effort to pay back their student loan, whether they're overseas or in New Zealand. One of the things that we want to see is a principle of fairness applying to the, member, applying to the bill, and we do welcome in that interest. We do welcome the measures that look at income, not just in the form of wages, but look at an expanded form of income and, and look at it in terms of business profits and incomes from trusts as well. I know when I was at university taking out my loan, there were many of my peers who received student allowance despite their parents earning far more than I did because they were receiving that as profits or as income from a trust. And, this, and also there's similar things, those that receive their income from superannuation. So this is a loophole that we do support seeing closed. But one of the things that we do want to raise in this is that national and its general attitude to student support, because since, we've, since Stephen Joyce took the reins as Minister of Tertiary Education two years ago, National has made a series of cuts to student support in an effort to, to use his words, dampen demand for tertiary education. And this is where I started my speech. Labor doesn't see dampening demand for tertiary education as a positive thing. We see tertiary education, whether that be at a university or at a polytech, um, as something that is crucial for New Zealand's future and something that we should be encouraging. So when the Minister talks of dampening demand, we have real concerns and real fears. And in many ways, some of the, the rhetoric of this is in this bill, and it is very much there in the, in discussed in the regulatory impact statement that sits alongside this bill. So if we take some examples where the Minister is dampening the demand for tertiary education, if we have a look um, at a, an example that I bring up often in this House, is the $42 million of money that was allocated to have extra trade training tr in New Zealand following the, Christ the Canterbury earthquakes, and this money hasn't been used because the Minister thinks there isn't demand. There's $34 million sitting there earmarked for further tertiary education in this country that that the government does not think should be used. We on this side of the House think that that should be, and we don't like the dampening of demand there. We also have concerns about people that are being shut out 
of the, of the borrowing scheme and other members who have taken calls on this bill have talked about their concerns at those over 55, new migrants, pilot trainees and part-time students not being able to access the loan scheme. There are many reasons why we should be supporting those over 55 to continue their education and to retrain. We, we are in, in, in an economy at the moment where there are many people in this age group who are losing their jobs and want the chance to retrain. They may not have the money sitting in the bank to be able to go and pay for this training, and we do not think that it is fair that they have been excluded from the student loan scheme. The changes made in budget two th budgets 2010 and 2011 have seen 25,000 people lose access to the student loan, and this meant that 25,000 of our people can't afford to study anymore, and that we don't see this particularly um, redressed in this bill, that we actually want to see more people having access to tertiary education. Labor has a proud tradition of um, the democratisation of education. It was um, Peter Fraser huge vision that we did make not only secondary but tertiary education following World War II, something that was accessible to far more New Zealanders. So while some of these changes that have been made, we're not saying every change that this government has made in terms of the, the funding that is available for tertiary education system is unreasonable, what has especially been unreasonable by this government is the retrospective application of many of these, um, many of these changes. Um, this was particularly so in the case of the 50% course, course pass rate requirement, that this was something that people that were already enrolled, who were already borrowing, to have that put on them retrospectively was a very difficult set of circumstances for them. And the Education Ministry's answers to financial review questions show that almost 800 people lost access to their student loan based on these re retrospective course results. This is a very large number of people to suddenly lose access to the loan scheme, and losing access to the loan scheme means you lose access to your ability to continue your studies not something that we are particularly fond of. We already have 84,000 young New Zealanders who are not in any form of um, education, employment or training, and we don't see putting in place rule changes that actually increases that category is a particularly positive thing. So this year's budget hiked up the student loan repayment rate by 20 per cent. And th this was very difficult for many new graduates. People learning, earning, leaving university, getting their first or their second job, and still not earning a, a high income, but nevertheless over the threshold, to be, to be faced with a 20% hike in their student loan repayments is a pretty big thing. I have a student loan myself and, and faced that, that increase in cost. But that is something that, I, that um, I was able to bear, but someone on a much lower income would not have been able to. But the most mind-boggling part, mind part of the changes that were introduced in this legislation is postgraduate students losing their right to student allowances. And this is one of the things that is discussed in the regulatory, regulatory impact statement, and it's gone through about whether, at what level it is that we should be targeting education to the early years. If we truly want to be an innovation-led economy, then actually we need to be encouraging post-grad research in this country. And the changes that were introduced in this year's budget have absolute, done absolutely nothing to encourage that. We even have the, the regulatory impact statement of the bill identifying that actually so it's not enough to be able to say the government's retort to this has been they can go, they're not going to get the allowance, they can go and use the loan scheme. Well, for many postgraduate students who have dependent children or other dependents in their lives, the student loan is not enough. That actually was the combination of the allowance with the supplement of the loan that was able to let them to continue studying. The regulatory impact statement identifies that the loan scheme was important to provide additional support for students with higher financial needs, for example those with dependents. So this is something that is known to the government that they were going to cut out a whole lot of people from doing postgraduate study. We are still waiting for some kind of explanation about why there is an opposition who thinks postgraduate research is not something we need. Labour looks forward to having some of our questions answered at, at select committee stage.
Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, this bill is all about continuing to ensure uh, the efficiency...